Hey, I'm David McCree, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about amateur athletic organizations and applying for tax exempt status with the IRS. You know, some nonprofit organizations don't require a lot of uh, advanced knowledge of the tax code and regulations and rulings to fill out their application for tax exempt status, their Form 1023, and others do, particularly uh, amateur athletic organizations. Amateur athletic organizations may qualify for charitable status under Section 501c3 because they're educational, or because they lessen the burdens of government, or because they help combat juvenile delinquency. Others might qualify as charitable because they promote national or international sports competition. When we refer to amateur athletic organizations, we're talking about booster clubs, little leagues, adult amateur leagues, maybe like a roller derby, uh, Olympic athlete training organizations, and a lot of others that involved uh, uh, amateur athletes. Now, an amateur athletic organization might be affiliated with a school or with a college, uh, or maybe with a private uh, gym or training facility. It might offer extensive training and education, or it might be mainly focused on promoting competition. It could be local, national or international. It might be focused on children only, it might be focused only on adults, or it might be open to athletes of all ages. Each of these distinctions requires a slightly different approach in preparing a successful application to the IRS. Now, The IRS and the courts have had some disagreements over the years, uh, so it's important to be aware of the issues involved when founding an amateur athletic organization or when you're representing a nonprofit client who wants 501c3 status. Of course, the rules are way too complex to cover in a short video like this, but I've put together an 80-page guide and reference to help you figure out whether your organization qualifies for 501c3 status and how it should best explain its purposes and activities to the IRS for the highest chance of success. The guide is mainly focused on how to use the Internal Revenue Code, Treasury regulations, revenue rulings, and court cases to convince the IRS that your organization qualifies under Section 501c3. Of course, I also write about the hurdles and roadblocks that can stand in your way and how you can avoid or overcome them. My approach is to be so thorough and so complete in providing information to the IRS that you make it easy for them to decide in your favor without them asking a lot of questions that introduce months of delays. So what's in the book and how will it help you? First I start off with some important, uh, some important definitions so you don't get confused by the technical language. Then I ask why 501c3? And I talk about that so you understand why it's usually better to get 501c3 status than perhaps 501c4 or 501c7. Then we look at the big picture of amateur athletic organizations. We look at the characteristics that they have, the main problem that confronts the amateur athletic organization uh, as far as getting exempt status, and I give you a helpful executive summary so you don't get lost in the details before you even get into the details. I discuss qualifying as an amateur athletic organization under 501c3 uh, and start with an evaluation of the organization so you can understand where your organization fits into the legal framework. I have a section on uh, educational or charitable amateur athletic organization where we talk about the definition of educational and charitable. We look at some IRS revenue rulings that are useful for establishing exempt status. And really importantly, I explain what organized and operated exclusively for charitable purposes means. I do this so you can understand what's required to be considered charitable. Then I have a section on fostering national or international amateur sports competition. I talk about the need for an amateur sports classification in the code. And then we discuss, um, just for historical perspective and to understand where all these rules came from, we, we talk about the 1976 amateur athletic provision that was added, uh, and then we talk about uh, a little fix that the IRS uh, and Congress introduced in uh, 1982. Um, it's a, a 501J 
which is uh, a classification called Qualified Amateur Sports Organizations. And I do this so you can understand how an organization that's not considered educational can still qualify under Section 501c3. Then we go into a section on uh, common problems and barriers to tax exemption so you don't sabotage your chances of being tax exempt before you even get started. I talk about fundraising activities of amateur athletic organizations and fundraising profits and the corporate income tax. I do this so you don't pay income taxes when it isn't necessary. And of course, we know that fundraising is key to survival for amateur athletic organizations. We talk about uh, private inurement and private benefit. Maybe something you haven't heard of before, uh, but you have to know these so you don't get disqualified for doing things you didn't know were wrong. Now the IRS has provided a couple of study cases for athletic boosters and of course it doesn't just apply to boosters, it applies to all kinds of uh, athletic organizations. Uh, they're, they're pretty good cases so I explain those and, and, uh, and analyze those in detail so you can see how the IRS actually applies the rules in practice. We talk about scholarships and allowances to amateur athletes so you don't misuse the term scholarship on your application and invite unnecessary IRS scrutiny. I talk about the difference between qualified sponsorships and advertising revenue. This is something that's really important to understand so you don't misuse the term advertising and end up paying unnecessary taxes every year. I talk about compensation paid to amateur athletes so you can understand that this does cause problems if done improperly. Uh, this is not an extensive section in the book. It doesn't treat all cases. Uh, not, it's not common for compensation to be paid, but it is important to be aware that uh, it can raise issues. We talk a lot about the deductibility of contributions uh, and contributions from fundraising events because you need to understand what a contribution is and what is deductible for your donors. A significant portion of the book is dedicated to reference materials and I've included the reference materials so you don't have to search all over the internet for various sources. Some of them are not that easy to find. The next section is on understanding the Internal Revenue Code citations so you can cite tax code just like a lawyer. I've included selected text from the Internal Revenue Code, Section 501A which talks about uh, corporations exempt from taxation, Section 501c3, charitable organizations, 501c4, social welfare organizations, 501c7, social clubs, and of course 501j, qualified amateur sports organizations. I do this, I include this code in here so you can understand what the law actually says and where it comes from. I have a short section on treasury regulations, so you can understand where the definition of educational comes from. Then I explain uh, how to use revenue rulings to persuade the IRS so you can understand why revenue rulings are so important for you, even more important than court cases. I include a table of helpful revenue rulings so you can quickly find the revenue rulings that will best help you. And of course, I include the full text of the relevant revenue ruling. So you have all the, the rev relevant rulings right there in one place for your reference. You don't have to go looking all over the internet for them. I do talk about the important court cases, although they probably aren't going to be directly uh, useful to you. But you do need to understand how and why some of the courts disagree with the IRS in certain areas, particularly about uh, whether or not um, the promotion of sports, amateur sports, is in and of itself an exempt activity. One of the most useful parts of the book is my uh, section with an example narrative paragraph for IRS Form 1023. This is the section of Form 1023 where you have to uh, explain in detail what the purpose of your organization is, what its activities are, and, and how those are tax exempt under Section 501c3. I include this particular uh, narrative and it's uh, quite a few pages in length. I do that so you can see what a successful narrative looks like and you can model yours after it. 
I have a section called Your Articles of Incorporation where I explain uh, what the IRS requirements are in addition to your state requirements for Articles of Incorporation. And I do that so that you can prepare Articles of Incorporation that the IRS will accept. All of this is in, uh, in the book. It's uh, around 80 pages. I've tried to keep it as short as I can. I've tried to keep it written in plain English so that anybody can understand it. But of course, I also have the references and citations so that it would be useful to a professional uh, advisor. It's called How to Qualify an Amateur Athletic Organization for 501c3 Tax Exempt Status. It is a PDF file, uh, ebook that you can download. Uh, right here on the screen is my uh, address where you can order it from form990help.com slash amateur athletics dash 501c3.html and I'm gonna uh, try to put up a, a link here that you can click on which you should be able to see unless you have a mobile device and you might not be able to see the link on the mobile device in addition to this do-it-yourself ebook uh, which I offer because I know not all organizations can afford to pay a CPA or an attorney to do all this stuff for them and they're willing to sit down and look at the materials and figure it out for themselves. Uh, but in case you want more, I do offer an inexpensive phone consultation. So you can tell me what your situation is and I, and I can advise you how to proceed. Uh, I'll, if you want to prepare your Form 1023 application for exempt status by yourself, I'll be happy to review it very thoroughly for you and offer suggestions. Or I could prepare the difficult parts of the form for you and you can prepare the rest. Or I can prepare the whole thing for you. Just contact me. Uh, you can go to uh, uh, form990help.com and use my contact page. Or you can contact me at my email address, cpa at form990help.com. Thanks for watching. I look forward to helping you.